So this is problem 2.9 out of Griffiths. And it says, suppose the electric field found in some region uh, is E is equal to KR cubed R hat in the spherical coordinates where K is some constant. So part A wants us to find the charge density. And the way that we do that is by using the divergence of your E field equal to your charge density rho over epsilon naught. And just multiplying over by epsilon naught, we see epsilon naught times the divergence of E is equal to your charge density. So all we have to do is take the divergence of E and we're good. Now this is in spherical coordinates, so we're going to have to do the divergence in spherical coordinates. And that will presumably be given and in the, for the r coordinate, it's 1 over r squared d by dr, r squared times kr cubed. And this is equal to rho. Okay? So this is epsilon over r squared times k times d by dr, r to the fifth, equal to our charge density. Now this is just a power rule, so you get 5k epsilon naught. That'll be in r to the fourth, but we have an r squared outside, so you'll be left with an r squared in the numerator, is equal to your charge density rho. So that's how you find the charge density. Part B asks to find the total charge contained in a sphere of radius r centered at the origin. So they want us to do it two ways. There's a few different ways you could do this. I'll start with the first one, which is by saying dq is equal to rho d tau. So dq is a bit of your charge density uh, d tau is a volume element times rho. Rho is charge per volume. So your units work out to be your charges. If we integrate both sides, we can see Q equals the triple integral of rho d tau. But rho we already found. That was what we found in the previous step. It's 5k epsilon naught r squared. And tau is going to be the volume element, which for spherical coordinates will be r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. So this bit you can think of as being your d tau. This is your rho. So what are our limits of integration? Well, uh, for our r, we'll just go from 0 to r. From theta, we go 0 to pi. And phi, we go 0 to 2 pi. And that's coming, I'm pretty sure I've shown that before, the triple integral and spherical coordinates, why the bounds are what they are. Um, cool. So with that in mind, all we have to do is evaluate this. So q will be equal to d theta d phi will give you 4 pi when you integrate that over these bounds. Uh, we can pull out the 5k epsilon naught. Those are just constants. And we're left with the integral from 0 to r. r squared times r squared is r to the 4 dr. And then all we have to do is a quick power rule. And you get 4 pi times 5k epsilon naught times 1 over 5 r to the fifth. And just simplifying a little bit, you get 4 pi k epsilon naught r to the fifth. The fives there can go away. So that's one way you can get the total charge. The other way is to do uh, Gauss's law. So this was one way. The other way is to consider using Gauss's law. 
Now, Gauss's law says the closed path integral of your E field dot DA is equal to your in charge close over epsilon naught. So if we were to just draw this out, I like to draw out any Gauss, Gaussian problem. We'll call this point here R, and this part here little r, okay? So the reason why I drew the Gaussian surface outside the sphere is because I want to know the total charge inside. If I drew the Gaussian surface inside, then I wouldn't include everything inside the surface. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get the magnitude of your E-field times... 4 pi r squared is equal to q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So then if we multiply both sides by epsilon naught, we can see the enclosed charge, which is your charge q, is the magnitude of your E field times 4 pi r squared times epsilon naught. But we know the magnitude of your E field, that's given. It's kr cubed r hat. And since we're dealing with magnitude, we don't have to worry about the unit vector r hat. So it's just kr cubed. So you can substitute this in here, and you can find that q is equal to 4 pi and then you're going to have your epsilon naught, k. And then your r's, we're going to use capital R here to the fifth, where we add our exponent. And we're using capital R because we're outside the actual Gaussian surface. I should have kept that as big R, but it's fine. Um, you could think of it as we're essentially trying to get to as close as we can. If you think of this as dr, we want dr to go to zero. So essentially, we want our the radius of our Gaussian surface to be the radius of the sphere. So this is another way you can get the enclosed charge. I can't box all that in, but... So there you go. That's two ways to get the enclosed charge.